This is Lisa from Mobile Tech Review, and this is the new Wacom One pen display. Not to be confused with the One by Wacom, which is a USB tablet that sits on your desk. Yes, they should be spanked for doing that. That's very confusing. Anyway, they haven't made a 13-inch pen display in a while. They've been getting bigger and bigger. And this one's meant to be their affordable entry-level product. It's $399, so $400. It's still not cheap Cheetos, but a lot cheaper than most Wacom products. We're going to look at it now. So there is only one configuration, and it is white on the back. It's a plastic kind of casing. It's pretty light, really. 2.2 pounds, which is one kilogram. So unlike most pen monitors that are, you know, not something you would want to put on your lap or hold, this one you actually could. It has built-in little stand feet, so you can prop it up on the table to a 19-degree angle. So this is not a Cintiq. It doesn't have Cintiq in the name, so that means it doesn't use the Cintiq line of pens, which now are up to 8,000 pressure levels. This one has 4,096 pressure levels. Believe me, that's plenty enough. This is a different kind of digitizer from Cintiqs. This is what we call, or we used to call it, the tablet PC kind of digitizer. Back in the days when tablet PCs all had Wacom EMR digitizers, so yes, it's a battery-free EMR, which is electromagnetic resonance pen technology. So these days, in the modern world, we see this on the Samsung Notebook 9 series. I wish we saw it on more laptops. It really is the best pen technology that's available for laptops and tablets in the Windows world right now. It's also the same technology used in the Samsung Galaxy Note 10 family of phones, and also on the Note 9. So you actually have cross-compatibility with pens there. You can take your Note pen and use it on this display. By the way, this supports Windows and Mac, as always, and it also supports Android. Uh huh. Well, that gets a little interesting with the cable connection. So it has what I call the Hydra cable, which we see with all these pen displays. Uh, they call it the X cable. So it has a little power adapter that plugs into, well, your AC power, and another USB-C style cable that plugs into the monitor. It's a particularly long connector, so you'll find a regular USB-C data cable actually won't fit in there. I tried several of them. Anyway, you have to have it plugged into power. So how would you then go about taking the other two leads, which are HDMI and USB-A, and getting them plugged in to your Android phone? Well, you do it using a USB-C hub. So I used a USB-C mini hub, and I used it with the Note 10 Plus. It works with other Android phones, but there's a kind of nice pen synergy there, and Samsung does their Dex desktop mode to make it more interesting. And yes, it actually works. So you have a portable pen monitor that's high quality in terms of pen response that you can use with an Android phone. Fascinating. No app required or anything like that. Anyway. 4,096 pressure levels and 60 degrees of tilt supported, which is nice for shading for those of you who are doing natural media style work. The line quality on this is excellent. The response is excellent. And it uses the same Wacom app and control panel setup that you're used to seeing with Cintiqs and other Wacom products. So you can set pressure level sensitivity, all that sort of stuff, in-app behavior for the single button that's on the side. No two buttons here, no eraser on the end, but if you wanted to do uh, Alt to sample in Photoshop, for example, you can do that or have it do undo. You got it. So as you can see, diagonal line jitter is pretty much zero. That's wonderful. And when you look at, say, competing Windows tablet PCs or the Microsoft Surface line and all that sort of stuff, whether it's Wacom AES or entering technology, usually there's a lot of diagonal line jitter, which translates into if you're drawing slowly, you might get lines that aren't smooth. None of that here. This is an artist's dream in that respect. You've got good pressure sensitivity. You can see I've used different Photoshop pens to do opacity or to do line size, and all of that works very well. Pretty smooth lines on curves. I'd like to see it a little bit smoother. What's well, not Cintiq level, but hey, it's better than most products out there. So from a pure artist standpoint, in terms of the brush and pen experience, it's excellent. Of course, something that's very affordable and portable, they also intend this maybe for people who want to do note taking. Though probably a lot of you will get a Surface or one of the many convertibles with pens that are available these days. But note taking, photo editing on the go, that's where it's really nice. If you prefer editing directly on the image instead of using a USB tablet with that level of indirection, which I'm, I just couldn't go back to doing that anymore. 
In terms of the monitor quality, it could be better, folks. It's not even up there with the Cintiq 16 in terms of brightness. They claim 200 nits of brightness. We measured at 191 nits. They claim 1,000 to 1 contrast ratio. We didn't get that, but then you do have adjustable contrast on this, and I left it at the default 50% because that looked the most correct and natural to me. I imagine if you raised it up, well, you could get it higher, but maybe at the expense of the image accuracy and quality. Anyway, you can see the metrics on screen. They're okay. They're not great. Honestly, for $400, I would have liked to have seen a little better. This has an anti-glare film on top of the display. You really can't see it and peel it off like you can with some budget pen monitors from XP Pen and Huion and all that. It's really well applied. Uh, it's not laminated either, so which none of the affordable Cintiq lines are. You have to look at the Cintiq Pro so you get the laminated glass. So and there's really no pen tip parallax here, no pen tip offset that means. But if you look at it, you can see the layers of the glass over the digitizer, which in part, is probably one of the reasons why the display looks okay. Not really great though. The resolution is full HD 1920 by 1080, which is fair for the price and for the size of the display. And this is a pen monitor, folks. There's no computer built in. It is just a display that supports pen. One bad thing about that anti-glare film is it does scratch pretty easily. I've already accidentally scratched it just by putting it face down on what I thought was a clean table. This is an AHVA display, which is similar to IPS in terms of technology. If you want to adjust the brightness and contrast, by the way, you're going to use the on-screen Wacom app to do that. There are no hardware buttons for controlling that. The only thing you get here is a power button. The pen is included, and it's a lot like a Cintiq-style pen or an Intuos-style pen. It's very comfortable. I have no complaints at all with the pen, other than the fact that there's only one button on it. It's on the light side, but some people actually prefer that. I like a thicker pen. I find it ergonomic, but like I said, you can use a variety of pens with this. By the way, this is not a touchscreen. Sorry, at this price, you don't get a touch or a touch option even. Non-touch, so... Yeah. Since this is a budget product, you don't get the fancy pants, well, tampon holder style case that you get with the Cintiq, but they are pretty clever. When you flip open the stand legs underneath one of them, you'll see three spare nibs and a nib puller built in. Pretty cool. So that's the Wacom One pen display. They're most affordable and they're most portable, which is one of the nice things about it. It's very light. It's easy to take with you anywhere on like most big Wacom pen monitors. Yeah, uh, The pen behavior on this is always, that's the selling point with Wacom products. You might argue with their display quality on their more affordable products and other things, but boy, the pen tracks nicely on this. And then you have the compatibility with a variety of other pens since this uses, like I said, the old kind of tablet PC technology. Only, of course, it's been updated over the years. So it's the same technology that's used on Samsung Notebook 9s and the Samsung Galaxy Note, which is kind of interesting. It means cross-compatibility with pens. Me, if size wasn't a consideration, I'd still look at their Cintiq 16. You get the Cintiq pen with more pressure levels, like I said, a bigger screen on it, and a better display. But of course, that one does cost $250 more and is not something as easy to carry around, is it? I'm Lisa for Mobile Tech Review. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more cool tech videos and pens up if you like this vid.